Hey, and welcome back. And welcome to the new t-shirt. <laughs> For the last few days, I've been working on two projects. One, a piece of sculpture. And two, I think you're really going to like. I found figures that prove something very big was built at Microhanish, the secret Air Force base. But first, let's go and look at my other project. There's Corbet eating his breakfast. The motorbikes. And... The kinetic sculpture. Early days, there's one or two issues with alignment and bearings, but it's going to be great. Stay tuned. So what have I found at RAF Macrohanish, or should I call it U.S. Air Force Base Macrohanish? To understand the true meaning of what I've discovered, you need to go underground and understand Scottish geology. Scotland has had a long and proud history of coal mining because of a unique fault in the Scottish central belt. The geology of Scotland is made in three layers. The southern rolling uplands, the border country, the central belt, and then the highlands. And on the south and the north of this central belt is a fault line, the great fault line, and the centre of Glasgow and Edinburgh is sunken. And that's where you find the coal. But not exclusively. The fault line extends all the way out to Kintyre and to Macrohanish. A coal seam was discovered under Macrohanish at the end of the 19th century and various coal mines were built. When my family first moved to Kintyre, we lived on the old coal mine before our house was built in Campbelltown. And it was fascinating for me as a child to see underground access points, wash houses, and even a spoilings tip. But I never really understood its real significance until now. The last iteration of coal mining was here at Trogadil Farm, quite near Drumlamble and Macrohanish. And it was run by the NCB, the National Coal Board. Here's a wonderful picture of local Campbelltown miners on a training course at NCB headquarters in Sheffield. So why am I talking about coal in relation to the secret airbase at Macrohanish? Well, you have to understand this map and a document that I found. First of all, to dig a coal mine, you need to really understand the underlying geology of the rocks for your mine. And it was very well known. These mines had run for over 100 years and they were extensive, stretching out under the ocean, but mainly east northeast from the mine shaft under the secret Air Force base. The coal seam was 17 meters deep. Not particularly great coal, but there was a lot of it. And they could extract it using the clear and pillar method, making an enormous cavern underneath the secret Air Force base. Now, it's well known that the military use old mine workings 
for underground bases. It's a cheap way of building a base. This cavern at Caversham, near Bath in England, is amazing. This Cold War Citadel was going to be the headquarters of the whole of the British government in a nuclear war. Remember the Great Western Railway ran from Paddington right into Box Hill Tunnel with a secret spur for government to enter this old mine citadel. But there's nothing like that at Macrahanish. Or is there? In a fascinating document published by Strathclyde University in Glasgow called Scotland the Brave? Question mark, about the relationship of the US with its facilities and bases in Scotland, they specifically mention something strange at Macrahanish. And to understand what I found, you need to, first of all, know the story about the sheep. The United States was absolutely terrified that they would lose all nuclear retaliation capabilities if their enemies made a strike against mainland USA. So they came up with the concept of forward bases, US bases on foreign soil that contained nuclear weapons. The forward base plan was very big in the Thatcher-Reagan era, where Britain had cruise missiles. But the US also has nuclear submarines based at Holy Lock. And round the corner from Holy Lock is this place, Faslane. Britain's Trident nuclear submarine base. The Clyde has a long history with the Navy and built years ago was a underground weapons store right behind the Faslane nuclear base. It is extensive. It's a hollow mountain with train tracks, doors that open, trains that can run in and out for early 20th century World War II battleship bombs. Possibly an ideal place to store American nuclear weapons in the forward base policy of the 1990s. So the US proposed it use Coalport, which is the name of the underground base in Gerlach quite near Faz Lane as a nuclear weapon storage. But Coolport came with some extra features. It's a camouflaged mountain with grass on the top and sheep. These sheep were UK Navy sheep and the US had a problem they didn't have anybody to look after the sheep. This is a true story. There's memos going back about the problem with the Colport sheep. So the US needed somewhere else as a forward nuclear base. Late 90s, the RAF were using Macrohanish less and less and it was becoming much more of a NATO, or dare I say it, American base. It wasn't well known at the time, but it is known now that Macrohanish stored American nuclear depth charges and had an American SEAL team 
who could deploy them for anti-shipping and submarine use. They also deployed U.S. Marines to a specific part of the base whose only job is to protect other nuclear assets. The U.S. Marines based at Macrohanish was totally hush-hush. Carrington, Lord Carrington, our Defence Secretary, didn't say anything about it. When asked, he said it was a normal redeployment of US troops. Well, that's a lie. A contingent of nuclear trained marine protection officers, a contingent of weapon fitting officers and maintenance officers for nuclear bombs all moved to Macrohanish. And then the British government said they were pulling out of RAF Macrohanish. They didn't need it as an RAF base and were handing over control to NATO and specifically to the North Atlantic Fleet Commander based in the US. So by 1996, the base was closed. But what I've discovered in parliamentary papers is this discussion between two members of parliament talking about financial investment into the closed RAF Macrohanish base. The questions were asked by David Fatchett, a Labour MP, to Nicholas Soames, who's the Secretary of Defence at the time. And what Fatchett asked is fascinating. He asked Nicholas Soames, why is Britain spending 19.8 million pounds on a refurbishment plan for the closed RAF Macrohanish base, but it gets better. He also asked, why is NATO spending, wait for this, 39.9 million pounds on the same closed base? Soames refused to answer what the project was, and we'll get onto that, but what he was forced to reveal is what contractors were paid the 50 million pounds to refurbish a closed base. And if we look at this list of contractors, it's amazingly revealing. So it's a long list of contractors, and I'm just going to go through what they do. And I think it paints a picture of what they were building with 50 million pounds. OK, a contractor called Amy, who are a certified defense contractor, big projects for the defense. Colas, an international company who build runways. Interesting company, a Texas-based company called Devon, who are specialists in hard rock underground drilling. Hattrick Bruce, they're an enormous company that specialize in industrial-based engineering steel structures. Morris Hill, wow, very heavy plant haulage. And now we get on to the real, possibly the main contractor, Molem. A household name probably in the UK. Molem built this. They are specialists in underground construction. The Post Office Railway, the Docklands Light Railway, subways, and the refurbishment of a bunker underneath MI5 headquarters in London. And it goes on. Neil Cochran, large industrial boilers. Parkinson Twaddle, government 
contractors. Trafalgar House, an enormous government-approved defence contractor. And Watson Norrie, a large government-approved defence electrical installation engineering company. What does that all add up to? Now, here I'm breaking tradition with my normal type of filmmaking because, actually, I have no proof of what they built. All I've got is some evidence, and I'm going to just leave it up to you to draw basically the same conclusion that I drew, that they were building something underground. So let's look at the evidence. First of all, it was stated publicly that Macrohanish needed to be, and this is government words, hardened in case of nuclear or chemical attack because it was an important forward NATO base. Macrohanish has a long tradition of mining and the mine was underneath the Air Force base. And after the UK pulled out of Macrohanish, 50 million pounds was spent using this list of contractors to build something secret. So what do you think that they built and is still at Macrohanish? The truth is down there. Thank <laughs> you.